let us contemplate on the teachings of vedanta the two key, key te the three key teachings of vedanta aham brahmasmi i am brahman brahman means consciousness i am of the nature of consciousness brahman is of the nature of bliss i am of the nature of bliss i am consciousness bliss and sarvam khalu ida brahma all this is brahman whatever i see and experience is brahman consciousness only how can these two sentences be reconciled i am consciousness i can understand because consciousness is not a object consciousness is the subject deepest subject is consciousness but how object also can be consciousness is the challenge we have to understand the from the consciousness the world appears you can you can see in the deep sleep you are you are asleep there's no world there's no body there's no mind there's no intellect but you are conscious so when you wake up in the morning the world appears your body appears and when you go to deep sleep again everything disappears so appearance it is like sunrise and sunset from consciousness everything arises and everything sets consciousness is the reality everything else is appearing in consciousness and going back so how does the appearance takes place appearance comes because consciousness has the conceptualizing ability which projects the world as a expression of consciousness the world is projected as a expression and in that expression you experience something so, so consciousness expression and experience these three things you have to understand expression is what makes the world appear experience is what world experience, what you get from the world let us trace this path from consciousness concepts arise okay what is concept concept con concept can arise only if there is some knowledge so consciousness from consciousness knowledge appears which becomes concept which becomes a thought and world is nothing but thoughts everything in the world is nothing but a thought there is sun is a thought there is my body is a thought so there is a expression which is happening from consciousness constantly knowledge concept thought and that is the world right so what is the root of this consciousness now you can you experience something in the world right what is a, what does the experience translate into experience translate into can be translate into some thought or it can be feeling okay so thought and feeling eventually is recognized as knowledge and the consciousness observes this so the world becomes a thought or feeling which becomes a knowledge and it is observed by the witness okay so expression is outward experience is inward into consciousness thoughts rise and thoughts fall back into consciousness right so look closely can you find a separation between the experiencer and experienced at any point of time experiencer and experienced you can never find a separation suppose i see the fan can i separate the fan from eyes if i don't have eyes i can't have the fan see the fan and if i don't have mind i can't understand what fan is and if i don't have consciousness there's no fan so you cannot separate out the consciousness and the object of consciousness
consciousness and object of consciousness. All the appearances are object of consciousness. Right? So that being the case, where is the separation between the consciousness and the world? Then still, why do we want to call the world as illusionary or mithya or a mirage-like? It is just that the consciousness, other than consciousness, there is nothing in deep sleep. In the waking condition, the same consciousness appeared as a world and it it is not that world is, there is something called world. The same consciousness appeared as a world. This you can understand in your deep sleep, dream. In dream there is nothing. Suddenly you see a tiger and elephant. And the tiger and elephant disappeared also. So what was, what was there as a tiger? It is nothing but dreamer's mind. The dreamer's mind itself appeared as a tiger and elephant. And tiger and elephant disappeared and the dreamer's mind is there. Nothing has happened to dreamer's mind. Like that consciousness itself is appearing like a world. It's not that consciousness has become the world. So what you are seeing is nothing but consciousness. But the challenge with consciousness, consciousness can never be an object. Consciousness is always a subject. Okay. So what you are seeing is object superimposed on the subject. The reality is the subject, but objects are appearance. Again, by going, by going to dream example, you can understand. In the dream, there was nothing. Suddenly a tiger appeared and elephant appeared. Okay. Where did they appear? appear? They appeared in the mind. Is there a tiger and elephant? No. But they are superimposed on the mind. Similarly, in the con on the consciousness, the world is superimposed. The world appears to be there, but what is really there is consciousness only. And consciousness can never be object, consciousness is always subject. The appearance is an object, but it is not reality because of this reason. So that is why it said Jagat Mithya, world is appearance, mirage like. But if you go deeper, there is no world, it is only consciousness, there is only existence. Okay. That is why the Vedanta that does not stop saying that Brahma Satya Jagan Mithya, but it says the world is also Brahman because what is appearing is not reality. Beyond the reality, there is consciousness only, the self only. So that is why you are experiencing all the time with your eyes open or in meditation. Only Brahman, consciousness only. The consciousness only is the reality. So let us look at the expression is, the consciousness itself is appearing like a world. There is nothing called world. Okay. On the other hand, the world is giving an experience, which, is, which becomes thought and feeling, and it becomes knowledge. Right. So the experience, let us look at the experience part. There is no separation between the experience and the experiencer. Can never be separation. They are one. So the experience is there and gets passed into feeling of happiness or joy or sadness. And that translates into knowledge. There is happiness or sorrow and the it goes to sakshi the consciousness as the knowledge input then what remains only pure awareness it is like this when you offer something to the fire let us say you put ghee into the fire the ghee burns and only fire remains you put rice into the fire the rice burns on the fire remain. Similarly, any object appearing in consciousness gets translated into finally into it becomes a feeling, thought, knowledge, 
and knowledge get absorbed in consciousness as I know. So what remains is I know. No longer there is an object, no longer there is a world, but there is simply knowing is there. That knowing is consciousness. All your experiences end up in simple knowing. No more there is an experience, the experiencer and the object. Similarly, all expressions are nothing but consciousness. In other words, you are consciousness and you have never, never deviated from the position of consciousness. The consciousness is Brahman and you are Brahman, respective of the expression and experience. Too heavy.